Singapore's very own tropical plants might hold the answer to cleaning up contaminated land in an eco-friendly way. And two scientists have discovered plants here that can remove toxic heavy metals accumulated in soil due to construction and pollution. Now, this means contaminated land in landscare Singapore can be repurposed for new developments in a greener way than existing solutions. Now, for more, we're joined by the lead researcher, Professor Lam Yang Ming. She is chair of the School of Material Science and Engineering at NTU. Good evening, Professor Lam. How exactly do these plants absorb these heavy metals and what does it actually do with them? This, uh these plants actually um, can immobilize and also metabolize some of these heavy metals. So they absorb them through the, the roots and then uh, through the metabolization and then they can make these uh, metals essentially harmless. Okay, so, so after the plants have absorbed them, sorry, uh, I, I was just about to say that actually after the plants have absorbed them, you can also harvest the plants and then recover the heavy metals from them and dispose them safely. Okay, can you describe to us why this is a better way than the methods that we already have to clean contamin contaminated soil? I mean, we, we have soil washing, landfilling, uh, other removal techniques already. Yes, um, the, the use of tropical plants that both includes the native and also the naturalized plants means that actually we can don't introduce uh, invasive species to clean the plants. And once the plant has done the job, we can actually then recover the metals from these plants. Compared to traditional methods where you use, like exactly like what you said, you use uh, the acid or you use solvents for washing this soil, it, it will not generate, our method will actually not generate the secondary weights. And this is actually a method that's powered by solar energy and environmentally friendly. And Professor Lam, is there a specific kind of land terrain that this process would work best in? Mm, I think it would base, uh, best made uh, use in land where you have a little bit of time frame, where you can actually have some plants growing on it and then leave it for a few months to a, a few years, depending on the toxic level. And actually, the selection of these tropical plants is very important. So tropical plants, which are actually acclimatized to our environment, will be very useful for this kind of purposes. Singapore is a very urban setting, uh, as you know, Professor Lam. Do you think that that uh, this kind of harvesting from these these species of plants that can remove or improve soil quality, do you think it would have an impact uh, on a setting like Singapore? Yes, I, I think so. Because actually, Singapore is it, essentially a Singapore is a very land scarce area, so we we will want to repurpose some of these land uh, usage. So if this is the case, actually the thing to think through is actually once the land is no longer used for particular industrial purposes, perhaps an analysis can then be carried out on the land, followed by the right plants to choose for the site. And then using these plants, basically you leave it for a, a few months, a year or two years. When the land is actually ready for redevelopment, it's already clean. So this is actually very suitable for a land scarce area like Singapore. Mm. So is it all good news, though, Professor Lam? Because your report mentions that this is a slow, it's a long-term commitment as well. It requires prudent management. So what kind of time frame are we looking at? So uh, this is actually a very good point. Actually, it depends very much on what kind of contaminants is in the soil. It depends on the concentration. Uh, of course, then with the studies that we have done, uh, we have um, a series of plants. Some of the plants are more effective for certain metals, certain metalloids. So if you choose the right plants, you're essentially shortening the time. You're essentially targeting the metals that you are trying to remove. So what you want to do is actually to bring down the level to below the intervention level. So heavy metals or contaminated soil might look different depending on the uh, location that you're in, the terrain that, that, you're, that you're looking at as well. So how is your team looking to expand this research, maybe even take it uh, overseas? Hmm. Actually, the research was originally carried out to, to assist uh, environmental consultants or planners or researchers or agencies to make use of these methods uh, of phytoremediation. I mean, of course, phytoremediation has been used overseas, but the, in the uh, other country context, the, the environment might be different. The set of plants that they support is different. So in Singapore, what we have is actually these uh, studies that we have conducted. So the tropical plants is actually very much uh, uh, 
uh, local context. And we want to share this with relevant uh, governmental agencies and also industries. Uh, and uh, we are we're creating a pictorial guide, uh, which available plant species information can aid uh, uh, users. So any organization that's interested in doing this can actually just look at these uh, and then choose the plants, the right plants for phytoremediation. And by sharing this information, we, we want to make sure that the knowledge is actually put into good use. So actually our team is also from the material science uh, 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 school. So of course, we are also very interested in using novel materials to uh, improve this accumulation ability. So we wanted to shorten the time required for this vital remediation. An exciting discovery in material science. Professor Lam, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Professor Lam Yang Ming, the chair of the School of Material Science and Engineering at NTU.